Are you tired of struggling in your self-publishing business? Would you like to focus on writing and let the pros handle the email list building and marketing? Then I just may have the solution for you in today's self-publishing expert guest, Johnny Andrews. Stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale. And if you want to learn tips and strategies for publishing your own books, then subscribe and turn your notifications on for all my latest videos. Johnny Andrews is a publishing expert, international speaker, and business strategies consultant. He's known as the go-to guy for entrepreneurs, authors, and indie publishers when it comes to launching books by leveraging the power of audience and Amazon. His techniques for using leveraged publishing systems has propelled clients' works to massive success on Amazon, the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and beyond. A huge part of the success can be attributed to Johnny's author platform, Rocket. Author Platform Rocket is a done-for-you email newsletter building program and full-service marketing agency for both fiction as well as author entrepreneurs. They grow lists of subscribers which are then given the opportunity to be introduced to new hot authors based on the genres they prefer. And that's what brings Johnny to the show today. Welcoming to the show, Johnny Andrews. What's shaking, buddy? How you feeling? I am delightful and thank you for having me. Awesome. Hey, dude, I can already tell we're hitting it off really well. It's almost like uh, our mutual friend, Kevin Tumlinson and I, I swear to you, it was like, since the word go, you and I really hit it off just in the same way I did with Kevin. And that's kind of crazy. I don't know if it was the same for you. Well, it really was because you know what, Kevin's sort of like a, uh, like an entrepreneurial version of Tinder. I've always felt like you just swipe <laughs> the right way. You know, if Kevin comes, it's like, oh, absolutely. Let's, let's date. It'll be fun. That is awesome. I knew you said it was going to be epic today. And I, you're it, already people have missed out on a lot of the content that we were even discussing just before we got here. So if you feel like you're repeating yourself, go for it. I, I'm okay hearing it again because some of this stuff was already just mind blowing. So um, I just kind of want to jump right into things because a lot of people can just really literally just Google the name Johnny Andrews, no H, Johnny Andrews, and you can find a wealth of great podcasts, interviews, and videos. And I'm telling you, I just want to jump into the things that I think some people haven't asked you yet. So you ready for this, man? Bunch of Chewy. Let's do it. <laughs> Excellent. Chewy, yes. In 2004, you were doing internet marketing and had built upwards of 250 different sites. Why did you transition from internet marketing into self-publishing in 2006, especially since this was the pre-Kindle era? Well, uh, honestly, there's not much of a difference. You know, that was kind of the thing is that, uh, and I had been technically self-publishing. The entire internet marketing thing is essentially self-publishing, especially back in those days. Yeah. That was like Wild West kind of stuff. Like we were like, that was the birth of AdWords, birth of like Facebook. I mean, it was all like, holy crap, what do we have in our hands? And so, I mean, there was just lunacy running amok. And so that was pretty much everybody kind of cutting their teeth on all of these new marketing strategies and techniques and coming out with products and things like that. So back in the beginning, uh, you know, I, I just had a bunch of different businesses that I was, that I was experimenting with and trying and whatnot. And one of them was a technique called a micro site. And that was just sort of a mini site that did affiliate marketing uh, somewhere. And I had, I mean, at least 250 of these really ridiculous things. I had a blog builder just and some of you know, as you might imagine, there were some of them that worked and most of them that didn't. Uh, but there was, it was fun. It was like, there was a little something on everything. You had dog training, you know, whatever it was. I had one selling commercial refrigerators in like Guadalajara. It's just what, you know, like, where did this stuff even come from sort of thing? And so I, and then what I did was I got into doing information products, like how to stuff. And it started with doing, uh, I don't know, maybe in the 2006 range, it was a lot of like how to do search engine optimization because I had become very good at that under the parameters at the time. It's changed a lot. So if anybody comes across something I wrote from back then, don't do it. It's old. <laughs> don't do it. Delete it immediately. It's, you won't even like it. It'll hurt you. Oh, but the, um, yeah, because the internet just changes. But they, it, right. I was publishing this stuff and, and it was, you know, PDFs and videos and all these different kinds of things. And Kindle wasn't even a thing at that time time and so it was really uh you know the kindle came out and it was you know at the tail end of what i think it was like tail end of 2007 yeah. and so roughly in the 2008 i was like oh this is interesting and i i you know got an assistant and i said hey you know let's do this 
and published upwards of 300 some odd books over the course of time. I actually hired someone, forgot that I did it, and she just went. <laughs> like, it was 2000, man, oh, I haven't even thought about this in forever. But it was way later when I like, looked at it, I'm like, oh, maybe I should check this thing out. And all these books had been published, I'm like, oh. And it was at the time, <laughs> Amazon didn't care. You know, it was, there, were, there were people selling these things, like how to make money on Kindle. That kind of stuff. Like, if you publish, man, it's like bags of money are going to be delivered by fat gorillas and diapers dropping out of the ceiling. <laughs> I was like, I want money from fat gorillas and diapers. <laughs> and so, obviously, I hired someone to bring in the fat gorillas, and it failed miserably. I think over the course of that entire time, my best month was like three bucks, maybe. I was like, really? what is that? I was averaging about a sixteenth of a cent per book, you know, kind of thing, because it was hammered garbage. Oh. Yeah, and, and so, it, 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 and I hadn't really thought about it. I was like, oh, wow. Well. So I just spent all this time like unpublishing this stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't her fault. It was just, I just had, you know, no direction. I was running a completely different business at the time. And then I sat there and I'm like, you know what? It could be fun. Let's really get into this and see what can happen. And I wrote this book uh, called How to Finally Live Debt Free and Wealthy. It was like this personal finance thing that talked about my journey from being homeless to, uh, you know, running a, a pretty successful business. And, you know, the steps along the way. It was horribly written. I, I mean, I did not get an editor at all. And it was still okay. This, was, this is the last minute where this was okay. And, I, and it's probably my fault that this is no longer okay. But I published the book. And I was like, okay, let's go. And I had these big email lists and stuff like that. I just literally blasted it. And it became the featured book uh, on Amazon. And so I developed all these little marketing techniques, including techniques to get, you know, reviews and all these different kinds of things. And within a couple of months, I had 450 reviews on the book. Uh, it sold thousands of copies. And in general, everyone's comment was, this is actually really good info. He is maybe kind of be better off if he learned how to use a comma. You know, that kind of thing. That was literally it. It was, it was interesting. And so I was like, okay, well, that was fun. But I've been doing that before. So I'm like, I kind of want a bigger challenge. So in 2011... You like the radio voice? There you go. Yeah, so that was 2000, awesome. And, and, and you even did the snapback with that too as well. And in 2011, something happened that would change everything. <laughs> what I did was I was sitting at my kitchen table and doing some research and I was playing with Facebook marketing and I'd been doing that since like 2008. And I'm like, this is going to be fun. Let's create a site around paranormal romance. And I built I Love Vampire Novels, which is now based, I think it's like either the biggest or at least one of the biggest paranormal romance hubs in the world. So it reaches, you know, it used to reach like 301 million people a week. And then Facebook decided that organic search was <laughs> silly. We don't <laughs> let people see what you do. Uh, but now <laughs> like the different promotions and stuff, we're, we're getting, you know, uh, three to 500,000 a week, which is decent, you know, it's good. But then, uh, so that was a book discovery site. So that what I was able to do is connect authors with readers and that kind of thing. I said, like, oh, well, this is fun. And so I started writing paranormal romance and so I put out an entire thing of it and then decided that you know what I prefer the marketing end because for me uh writing at least at the time in that way was very similar to sort of like giving birth while driving and being electrocuted at the same time it just was not a thing that I wanted to do often um because I, I just I like the marketing part of it better you know and I, and I sold the books they did fine you know yay good times uh, but I just, you know, it just kind of came into this. And so as I was growing this, uh, this e ecosystem and then replicating it, so now there's different romance sites and uh, then there's sites for other versions of uh, fiction, authors started coming to me. I had no intention of creating a marketing agency. I literally wanted to stay away from that as much as possible because these folks were coming at me going, hey, can you do the thing for me that you're doing for you? And I was like, no, no, not at all. I'm, I'm not touching that with a foot pole. But then eventually there were so many of them, like, all right, I kind of have to. And it was funny because Author Platform Rocket started as an idea that I didn't even sit down and filter. I wrote an email. Uh, I, at the time, I think I had maybe, I don't know, 4,000 author subscribers to a newsletter that I didn't even send to. It was just like, okay, cool, guys. Well, I had other businesses. I was like, yeah, whatever. There's nothing more. You know, that kind of thing. I was like, right, what am I doing over here, Shane? And so I sent... <laughs> I sent this email. I'm like, hey, I've got this idea. Um, what if we do these 
lead building giveaways, individual author giveaways. We'll manage the whole thing. We'll run the whole thing. Um, and then you pay us what you want. And we'll run the Facebook ads. So we'll just do this re recurring billing thing. And these things were like these, you know, 90 day kind of like restarting giveaways that it started with. And to say that we were crushed under our own success would be something of an understatement. Uh, there was at any given, like after that happened, by the end of 2016, we were running anywhere from like 1,500 to 2,000 different Facebook ads a day. Wow. In all of these different ecosystems uh, for these authors. And so what happened then was th there, there just is not a humanly possible, there's no scenario in which that ends well for anybody. And so what we had to do uh, was morph that piece of the business into what is now software. And what it does is it, you know, we, we do the marketing and it distributes the leads and it's very, it's like, <sighs> for everybody involved, you know, it, it's just so much better now. And so that's, that's, you know, that's what that became. And then at the same time, uh, we had a lot of authors who were asking, uh, by this time I said we, because I had built a team uh, sort of around this lunacy and slowly by, you know, surely and slowly we, had, we grew into uh, this agency. Now we handle AMS, Facebook ads, direct sale, uh, you know, we'll do the strategizing, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of like almost, you know, a consulting done for you marketing company where we work with some of the top authors. So we've had, you know, uh, we've had authors that, you know, helped hit you, you know, we've had helped them hit the USA Today. Uh, folks were there, you know, they were struggling. And, you know, we came in, there's this package. I don't offer very often, but I'll tell you about it. Yeah, it's interview only, trust me on this. Uh, but, like, we did a, what I call a facelift. This guy had 30 books, really well written, because we threw them at an editor and said, pick these apart, tell, them, tell me if they suck. And he's like, actually, this stuff's really great. It just looks like hammered garbage. And I was like, okay, cool. And so literally took his entire brand, and we gave it this facelift. And he's now selling more than he has. He's been, uh, he's been a published author for, like, I want to say 20 years. And he's now doing more than he ever has before because we made him look like something people want to buy today, you know, and, and changed up the format and fixed everything about his ecosystem. And, and it, it's taken a very long time uh, because there were so many books and so many problems and everything. It's like you look and then your eyes would bleed and you have to like wipe it off so you can look again. And we would fix that. So, but most of the, the majority of the folks that we now work with on the high end, are pretty successful authors, you know, who have a, you know, an a decently established brand uh, that are like at that level where they're like, listen, I got here, I need to go here. And it's like, okay, let's, let's do these things. So anyway, hopefully that was long winded enough and at least answered your question, but it's been a journey. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Actually, you covered quite a bit. It seems like we segued pretty well over into, I, I definitely wanted to talk a lot about Author Platform Rocket anyways, because it really appealed to me. And I shared a little bit of a synopsis of what it is. And it seems like you've definitely covered ground. So question is, it seems like you're fiction heavy. I asked you this before we connected mm -hmm. here. Is nonfiction in the works? And how soon can we anticipate something like that? Yeah, actually it is. Uh, there's been a, first of all, it started off the exact same way. The same problem is I got a lot of emails from people, you know, and, and also folks that, you know, I knew back in the day in the entrepreneurial circuits and, and stuff like that, that were like, hey, you know, can we? Now the big problem was that, uh, and in fact, I had a call today uh, with, with one of those clients that were taking very quietly on the back end. And the problem is, okay, I want to do a book. I want to use that book for lead generation and to promote back-end sales. But the problem is they don't have typically any idea of, I guess the best way to say this would be to weaponize it. Like, how do you turn this book into something that's going to manufacture the outcome that you want? And usually that begins with the very first thing that is, who are you writing for? And so with the nonfiction piece of this, it is a... With the fiction piece, we've created a very effective system that works with the majority of authors because we, yeah. you know, I've been doing this for so long. We're over 16,000 authors at this point. Wow. And I've been doing this so long for so many different folks that – you know, you know what you know what everybody needs at that point. Like everybody needs kind of the same stuff. You need like lead generation, uh, you know, direct to sale. Uh, you know, if you're Amazon exclusive, blah blah blah. You need back catalog work, that you know, massaging, and you know, you need media buying with the emails and stuff. It's not 
you know, there, there's, there, there's like a scope of services, you know, that's like, boom, if you take this, you're cradle to the grave covered. Easy. Okay, now let's go over to this end. Now what we have is some deep-rooted psychology that's going to take a lot of uh, essentially coaching. Because if normally what happens, and, and, and the fellow I was talking to today was extremely well-seasoned entrepreneur. He knows all the questions to ask. Like, you know, who are you? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? You know, it, 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 that, like those three, if you can answer those three, you're very much on your way to doing well. You know, what's the purpose of this book? Do you need to make, is this book going to pay your rent? Typically the answer is no, because they want to use it to sell something that's like $50,000 on the back end. I'm like, great, you can lose a couple bucks on the book, right? It's like, great, here you go. Um, but this, he was messing up on the who he was and who he served. He was actually writing a book and he'd already written a hundred pages, pages of this book that were serving two diametrically opposed masters, meaning there was no direct message. Mm, okay. So it's like, here's the problem. If you go after everyone, like the biggest, the biggest problem is you say, who is this for? And they're like, well, it's for everyone. Everyone can benefit. I'm like, stop immediately. Don't say it again. If you go for everyone, you'll talk to nobody because you have to enter the head in the mind of the prospect. Yep. And so that's what we did is, you know, so his book is now going to be for uh, entrepreneurs who have hit that level in their business where they're really struggling uh, for both brand recognition and like growth. Cause they, they're like at that point where it's like, it's almost because every now and then you, I shouldn't say every now and then it's kind of every always your business is super painful to grow. Yeah. Like I've like, you know, with, with what, you know, even with this, like I've had to like reinvent, I'm like Madonna at this point where I'm like reinventing myself constantly. <laughs> like you've got me at the point where I have like, you know, the steel bra on right now. This is whatever that period was for her. I got my hair <laughs> tight and I'm just like, no. Papa don't preach or whatever she was saying. I think that was the Vogue era. I was that the Vogue era? Yeah, I'm in the Vogue. I'm in my, you know, my Vogue era right here. <laughs> and and it, that's that's a, a standardized story for entrepreneurs. Is like you got to hit that and go. But he was going after also employees who wanted to transition into entrepreneurship. So even though the pain and suffering is basically the same thing, they're at two completely different points. And the conversations, like you have to have a conversation at the front end of this that's going to hook them. And you can't have that same conversation and try to get everybody like, hey, oh, but you, you're you still working for someone and you have these mindset problems. Oh, wait, you're in your business, but you have these growth problems. It doesn't work. So he's 100 pages deep. We're flushing the whole thing and starting over because it, it, it would have been a garbage piece of work. It would have gone nowhere and wouldn't have helped a single freaking person. Um, so this way, we're going to be able to like target that, figure out how to do it. But anyway, long story short. That's what you have to do if you're, in, if you're like doing that. And, and the people we're focusing on are the uh, personal development space as well as like the entrepreneurial business kind of space. Because I've dealt with them for years and years and years. And it, it, I, you know, I feel very confident uh, that we can help in that. Yeah. Uh, so here's a good question. This is actually off, off the script here. Uh, it just really starts to give me kind of question. Why is it that people have to focus on something a lot more niche down, more focused as opposed to something that's generalized. Because I know I started my business that way and I made a big fat $5 paycheck, I'm sure, for the month. But once when Straight I started focusing, you know, what's that? <laughs> Straight up gangster level right there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So at any rate, uh, why is it that generalized isn't going to draw you very much money as opposed to hyper-focused and knowing exactly who your demographic is and who your audience is? Well, most people that are going to get into business at this kind of stage probably aren't, you know, they don't have a $20 million budget to hurl. Um, so at that point, that, that gets, you can go general. You absolutely can. There's nothing impossible about that. Like Amazon is a generalist company. You know, they're there to help people buy. Tons of generalist companies out there do really well that do broad spectrum marketing. Yeah. The reason you want to do that is because you're looking for what's called direct response marketing. And within that is the content market, like the stuff, you know, the, that we're doing here where we're like saying a bunch of things, but really we just want everybody to buy our stuff. So it's like, we can just shut up and they'll give us money. That's called content marketing, but it's a form of direct response. Yeah. And if you are going to a general audience, then you're going to get a whole bunch, whole lot of nowhere because what conversation are you even having with them? Mm, okay. You know, what is, like, how do you do that? How do you think about it in terms of a money thing? Like, let's just put this in, in bare bones basics, like loot, money in, money out. Mm -hmm. If you're going to everybody, you got to market to everybody. What is that message? And how do you pay to get it out? Versus if you're going to 
let's say, uh, we'll keep it in books. Let's say you're going to do a book for people who are experiencing grief because of the loss of a loved one. Okay. Women specifically who maybe lost their mother even better, not better. That's a horrible thing. I'm just saying, you know what I'm talking about? Like, here's, I'm not saying that's good to lose your mom. But like, if you're going to market to that person, it's, it's very specific. It's like, okay, I'm going to write a book for women who have lost their mother. You could do that. You can market that all day because your costs are going to be way down because you're just going here. Now, if you want to do dudes who are in the same situation, you do a second book. You track that one, right? It's the same thing. Just maybe change the pronouns or so. I don't know how it works, but like now you have two books that go to a very specific audience that are sending a very specific message. You can speak to those people in a way that's going to get them to you, you, you identify with their, with their emotional situation and then you give them a call to action. So you identify with where they are and you move them to where you want them to be through a story. And if you're all over the place, you can't move them because if you're speaking to an 18 year old boy versus like a 57 year old woman, completely different set of like the stuff going on in here on both levels. No, like th th these people are not going to relate to each other and they're not going to relate to your story. Is that making sense? Absolutely. That makes complete sense. And I, I was hoping I can get that out of you. And that's, that's just such great stuff here at this point. It's nothing I was expecting. And you said it was going to be epic. So um, I want to get into this next uh, question here. Mm -hmm. In the previous interview, you had stated, you mentioned an important milepost or milestone of most self-publishers out there is about $10,000 in earnings per month. Why is it the vast majority of aspiring authors don't even reach that mark these days? I mean, there's a lot of reasons uh, that they that they won't hit that or they don't hit that. Um, I mean, at the bare bones basics from a mechanics perspective, not publishing enough, like that's a huge one that, that, that kills me. And it's a, it's a mental milestone that's beginning to be eroded just through the power of like, like brutal truth out there. Um, I, 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 get a, I get a lot of people who, who contact me early in their careers, obviously. And I, I've actually created a, a copy paste template response to that is you know, with a series of questions. It's like, what is your daily writing ritual? That one right there. If you don't have a daily writing ritual, you're not in the game. Period. End of story. True. You know, get rid of this thing. Sorry, I keep getting these weird messages from these people that I thought were gone. <laughs> um, no, it's, if, you, if you don't have a daily writing ritual, you're not really serious about publishing in this day and age. Yeah. Back in the days of yore where the publishers, you know, were the, were the gatekeepers, it made sense because they controlled all that stuff. But that's not the case anymore. So one of the biggest problems is if you're not publishing enough stuff. The other problem is if your books suck, you know, maybe they do. Go get an editor. Your books don't have to suck. You can take a crappy writer, pair them with a good editor with patience and time. <laughs> you can turn that crappy writer into a great writer. You have to practice it. You have to have somebody... It's, uh, there's a lot of TED Talks on this specific point, but like if you're going to get good at something, you need to be able to recognize when you're not doing it right and course correct. This is why coaching is so important, and it's so funny because there is not a sports team on earth, any continent, whatever, that doesn't have somebody who's a coach. They are there to make sure that the players are doing it the way they should be, Right to like maximize the potential. Yet when people throw that into like being an author, or being an entrepreneur or something, they're like, that's a scam. Okay, <laughs> welcome to fucking for the rest of your life, or at least taking 11 million years longer to get to where you want to go. Because it's the same reason why authors can't recognize that the cover that their like sister-in-law drew looks like crap. You know, you, okay, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's, yeah. it's like, well, this is a family thing. I'm like, I don't care who did it. Like, I don't have nothing, I have nothing against your family. That's not the cover that you, do you, do you want to be a hobbyist or do you want to make money with this? Do you want to have a career or do you want to, it's cool. Trust me, I've done it. I've had the conversation. I've showed, my, my family had no idea what I did with my life until I showed them a picture of my book on the Amazon bestseller list. Then they're like, oh, my son's an author. Oh. And it's amazing. It's, it's, it's so cool to finally see a glimmer of recognition come into like a, you know, a 98-year-old woman's eyes when she can finally explain to her, you know, to the tea party, hey, 
you know, she didn't even need the author. You know, then she can actually tell these people what this guy who keeps coming over to her house does for a living. You know, outside of driving her around for bagels. Um, but that's just a personal thing. But it's, if you want to be an amateur author, perfect. That is completely fine. Totally do that. But if you want to be real, if you, if you want to make this a, a career, you need to accept certain facts. And the first fact is, if you are not writing every single day, if you think you're going to go away with publishing one book a year or every two years, you're not going to get there. The likely, and, and when I say these things, I'm taking this off of a small sample set of 10, like over 10,000 authors that, that I've worked with in various capacities over the years and just watch what's been happening in this industry from various vantage points. If you're not doing it, well, you know, hey. So daily writing ritual, put out about, if you put out four books a year, great. That's awesome, that's a good starting point. Maybe a little faster, but I think four is sustainable. Yeah. I work with a lot of folks who are doing like a book a month. I smell the burnout, even through like the computer. You know, you, it's just like, you know, when your engine braking coming down a swirling mountain and the smoke starts coming out of like the, you, that's what that kind of looks like after about two years. So pace yourself. It's all good. But anyway, four books a year, daily writing ritual, and make sure that you have an email list. Like you're building that audience. You're building that subscriber base because it's going to be the thing. It's not the thing that makes you money today. It's the thing that keeps you going for years and years and years and years and years to come. And to do that, you need certain tools. And I've had this argument with a lot of people. It's like, why do you need lead pages? Why do you need something? Why do you need this autoresponder service? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Are you opening a bakery? Are you going to argue why you need an oven? It's your business. You know, that's what you do. You know, don't, don't argue about it. Just you need like your own domain name. You need a website on it. Yep. You don't need to look amazing. It's fine. You can look somewhat crappy because a lot of people don't go to the author website. That's totally cool. But within this, I recommend, like, let's keep it simple. Let's use something like leadpages.net. I always recommend that middle option where you can split test, meaning you're going to show people different images. So when you're hitting it with traffic and you're building that list, it's like, flip, 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 flip. and eventually one of them's going to be better than the others. To give you an example on a guy we're working with now, I went from like, I want to say 9% to 40%. You can see how that might affect the cost of leads you know, to the cost of subscribers if you're going to be doing that. So you always have to be building your subscriber base. It is a daily thing. So it's your daily things are writing ritual and marketing ritual. If you have one book or you're working on one book, you could be building your audience. That's what you do. Engage with them. Do those things. But those are really kind of fighting against that is, is the, the biggest mistakes. The, set, the next biggest mistake is believing that marketing is magic or that it's difficult. I get that a lot. It's it, not magic. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I'm going to tell you. So as a guy who does this every day for a lot of people, I should say my team does this for a lot of people. And I sort of mentor from the back. I don't want to pretend like I'm the wizard behind the curtain. I've taught the team. They handle the business. I grow the business. That's how it works. Um, the way marketing is not this magical thing where if you put in $5 into Facebook ads, you're going to be a New York times bestseller by Tuesday. No, and I literally see this, uh, this, this quiet sort of vein of that mindset going on in the author communities. It takes a lot of testing. Give you an example. We have a fellow uh, who came in for a, what I like to call the spelunking package. <laughs> and that, it's very, no, it's legitimately, it's like poking into the dark with sticks to see what comes out. It's in a big genre. That he's micro down, that he's micro down, that he's micro down to this thing that I've never heard of. But it was interesting enough that I'm like, I think someone might want to read this. I have never seen a book like this published. I actually checked, I don't think in 20 years or so. And I'm like, all right, let's find out. Let's see what's going to go on. I'm like, dude, listen, you're not going to make a dime off this. You're going to pay us a ton of money. And this is your first book, but you have no idea who your audience is. He's like, actually, this is great. He's, you know, the head of this marketing company. I'm like, Awesome, cool, let's do it. So over the course of time, check, you know, split testing ads, split testing audiences, split testing landing pages, it's just constantly like all these different things. We're working it and massaging it and looking and finding and we're probably two months deep now and I think we've hit a vein. We've hit a vein. It's like the, the, the subscribers went from $12 each to 35 cents. Oof. 
Right, but think about this. This has been probably 50, 60 different ads that have been running over the course of like five or six different audience pools. And now we're like doing these overlays of like this person, this person, this person, with these different images to hit these different pages, 16 pages now that, that have been tested with this to go, yeah, we, then this is the guy that we got from nine to 40%. And that's what, it, it's not magic. It's just constant testing. Yeah. And it's even more frustrating because as you know, Amazon is not very forthcoming with their data. And so the big question is, it's like, uh, well, what are you doing that's working? I'm like, I don't know. You want to shut one of them off and see? <laughs> and someone said, yes. They said, shut it all off. And I went, okay, fine. In two weeks, they were down 30% in sales and reads. Just, just like, wow. I'm like, how about we turn the marketing back on? They're like, yeah, I think that would be prudent. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like great. Hopefully you can make your mortgage payment. It's, um, so it's... It's a lot of testing, it's a lot of headaches, it's a lot of hassle, and it takes a long time. The authors who are doing 100,000 to a million a month didn't get there by accident. They got there because they spent those first years spelunking. They were poking into the darkness, you know, to figure out like what works, what converts, what turns this into that. And they know it now, you know, and they could go out there and when they launch a book, they could say, this works, I'm gonna do this. And then, of course, whatever this is changes because everything always changes. But they have the skill set now to fix it. And if, you know, if something breaks, they can be like, what broke? Why did it break? What happens? What do I do now? Oh, this. You know, and that's why these people do really well is because they took the time and they didn't expect it to be like, well, you got uh, four days. I need to if I, I need to see a million in sales and I'll give you a $20 budget. But other than that, we're you know, it's like. No, like that's we don't work with that. It's just it's stupid. Yeah, un unrealistic expectations. It's so funny. Some people will try yeah. out Facebook ads or AMS ads, and they expect to kind of throw a few bucks at it, and all of a sudden they're blowing up the charts. <laughs> oh, and don't get me started on AMS, man. Those things because everybody got used to Facebook, right? So yep. you turn a Facebook ad eh, within about you know it depends on the situation, but usually within a couple of days, you know if it's going to do what it's going to do, and if not, you can shut it off and try again. Yeah. So the same mindset then was applied to AMS ads. That's not how they work. It takes like seven days sometimes for that stuff to even appear. Yeah. And then Amazon's not even counting the reads. So all of a sudden you have like 16 things going. You're like, oh, I don't know. Just, it's not. So here's how to solve this. Should I tell everybody? Please go for it. All right. So I'm not talking about book launches. Okay. Wipe that from your mind. If you're doing a book launch and you need money on that, that's a different conversation. We can talk about that next. But if you're just doing what I call a slow cooker, which is say like a back catalog book that you're like, oh, this thing should be making me money, Shane. And I'm like, okay, yes, it should. What you want to be doing is looking at seven day ROI. Like if you're not spending a hundred dollars a day on this thing because it's like a super earner and you're spending say 20 or less per day on this thing. And this is the thing that kills me every single time. Like people, these authors will like start up an ad and look at it. No, oh, it doesn't work. And literally that fast. They'll turn it off the minute it's live. Give it time. It has to cook. The machines are thinking. They're learning about you and what you want. And if you shut them off early, you'll anger them. And then the gods will come and suck off your face. But it's, what happens is, what, what ends up happening is the ads, you're never going to know if, if that was a good one or not. So you have to give it time. I like to give, if it's a, I look at a seven-day ROI. So if you're looking at an ad for like two days, with authors, you kind of have to do this a little bit, at least 24 hours. If your clicks are like a buck 10, kill it. That's fine. That's, that's, that's totally understandable. But if you get it to the point where you have a reasonable click cost, and like our floor, as I like to call it, is 3% click-through rate. If, you get, if you're less than that, you're doing, no, 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 stop. Um, but once again, you got to give it a cut. You got to give it some time. And so in like a, you know, as we call it the nonfiction world, you can give it a little bit more because you're typically making money on the back end. But with fiction people, you look at that seven day ROI. So let's say the ad is performing the way that it should. And you have, you look at the seven day, you're like, okay, what did I spend? What did I earn over this time? Because what happens is throughout the day, it's going to go up and down, up and down and up and down and up and down. We've had authors like message us, you know, some of the agency clients are like, uh, um, um, did you see that the click cost went from 18 to 40 cents? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's like three o'clock, like let it play out. It's going to sure enough when everybody, you know, comes and clicks on the stuff in the evenings, usually, 
uh, that, you know, the cost went back down. So you look at it from yesterday and like, oh, look at that. It went down instead of up. But had they been allowed, like, had we been, you know, not put the iron fist of justice on them, they would have shut off an ad that was making them a ton of money. Yeah. Right in the middle of the day because all of a sudden it looks like it spikes. But if you give it seven days and just chill out, everything's cool. You know, everything's cool. You would look at that and say, okay, if it's 10 bucks a day, that's 70 bucks. And if you made like bare bones minimum, try to make $2 for every dollar you put in. That's our floor with that. Sometimes if you're spelunking enough, you can get it to where you're making 10 to one ROI. We've had that happen. Yeah. It's something of a unicorn, especially on a non-launch, but it can't happen. But if you're hitting something that's like, you know, $5 in for every $1 you're putting out, this is called printing money. Do more of it. There you go. Should I cover the launch thing? I can't, I, you know, it's funny. Uh, before you do, you go into that. It's so funny. You, you, uh, I, I could all call it printing uh, money. I always call it my ATM. Anytime I yeah, find something that just works, I'm like, that's my ATM. I just go ahead and just, you know, work that right there. But yeah, that, that's beautiful. But yeah, uh, please go for it. No, I, before I got I to gotta do a check it. Am I covering the kind of stuff that you want to see in the show? Or you, you, you can course correct me at any point here. Or to say, you know what, less pig analogies, please. <laughs> no, I don't you think I more gorillas and diapers, though. <clears throat> Done. All right. So if your, di- if, your, if your website looks like you took a diaper and flung it against the wall, that is bad. Change it. Anyway, launches. <laughs> I'll, stay, I'll attempt in my ADHD oddled brain to stay on topic, but I will here. Um, so launching a book, there's really three things that work ever. Uh, and they continue to. Actually, there used to just be two, and now there are three because of AMS. And the problem is, I'm going to tell you the problem in advance, is when you do this, you don't know what's doing the best. Well, I'll tell you, the email is doing the best, typically. And so you have to wait until the smoke clears and then see what the paid ads are doing. Because sometimes you might be in the wrong place. You have to make adjustments. Yeah. So launching. This is what the big kids do, like the ones that are constantly in the top 100, uh, that are doing six figures a month, seven figures a month, uh, that kind of thing. Typically, these are also the ones that have the smoke blowing out of the radiator as they're going down the mountain because they're doing you know, a book a month. But here's how it works. You want email. So what I want you to do is picture the earth. Big thing, round thing. Hopefully you don't have any flat earthers. Um, you know, the globe with the gravity and stuff like that. So you need rocket fuel. This is no different than what NASA does. You need to be able to break the atmosphere to be able to get up into the stratosphere. And to do that takes some epic fuel. It's hardcore because that's, that's where all the pressure is. Email is that fuel. Email is that fuel because these are, and, and so there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can like run a sale and go and buy up a bunch of spots on those, uh, I call the book discovery sites. I guess they are just called book promotion. I like my term. We're sticking with it. So discovery sites, my interview, my words. Uh, yeah, discovery sites. You get a whole bunch of those things to all hit in a 24-hour period. If you don't have friends, that's an expensive way to do it, but it can work. And it does frequently. Like we, we call it a pulse. The other way to do it is you get a whole bunch of friends together, like a syndicate kind of thing. And you get them all to hit set. Like all your buddies are like, yeah, boom, buy this book. And it rises. Rise. And it's amazing. It's really cool. Like it, it, it very quickly, you're going to get tons and tons of sales and you're going to feel awesome. And then the next day when it starts to fall is when the depression starts because your numbers aren't going to be as great. There's always the, the spike and you have to be prepared for the emotional situation. Like it is literally the most manic depressive kind of thing in, in human experience. I, I truly feel. Cause you're like, yes, I am winning. Oh. And then it's like within 24 hours cause it's going to fall expect that you're not going to hold unless you're spending two grand a day which we have people to do that yeah. you're not going to hold it up there that long because as you get closer to number one in amazon the volume of sales that it takes to hold that position is kind of like you ever seen a dog stick its head out of the car window yeah like that air is what's coming at you but except except in amazon it's like if you took that same dog and shoved it right in the back of a jet engine that's what it is and so it's going to push you back after burning off your flesh and so now you need to prop it up. I call this the buoyancy point. And you can manufacture this. Is where are you going to float on the bestseller list? And so depending on what your budget is, and a lot of folks who are really just ridic- gangster about this are going to spend five, six, seven hundred, a thousand dollars for a couple of days to keep that lift up there because what they're going for is either the, the sales or the reads. 
Now you can do this with less money, legitimately you can, like whatever your budget is, you can do like a micro launch and have like, you know, your, your uncle call your aunt to buy the book while you run like a $3 Facebook ad. Like if that's you, just do that. You'll feel good about it. It's kind of cool. So you, you hit it with the Facebook, you hit it with the AMS, and what this is is acting like a little booster engine, you know, keeping you up more. And what you now need to do, this is where the ROI thing comes in. You can never tell, you have no idea what's really doing what until you hit that plateau. You hit the spike, so elation, depression, spike. Now you're concerned. Be concerned here. So seven days, you're watching this every 24 hours, especially if you're spending tons of money is did you earn, did you lose, did you earn, did you lose? Now if you start trending downward, what you wanna do is cut your budget by 50% and just let it chill out, but give it a second, gotta give it at least a day because what you're doing is the, the machines have been jostled and now the AI isn't sure what you're, what you're doing anymore. Like, oh, I thought we were doing so well for you, master, please. And now they have to course correct and they'll lock you back in. So if you have a highly profitable ad, you could usually keep it up there, but just watch that ROI. As long as you're doing something, and at this point, you sh if you're up there, you should be doing five or 10 to one at this point because the organic traffic, that's the goal of this, is you're spending money to get the organic traffic, these people coming in from all these different angles to see you and to buy you and read you. And that's how it works. And so you just watch your ROI, and when it starts to squeeze, cut your budget. Wait, cut your budget. And as long as you're in that profit place, you, once again, your ATM, as you say, that's, that's how it is. So that's how to launch a book with paid advertisement and the love of some friends. That's, that is amazing. You gave some next level knowledge here. There's going to probably be some newbie self-publishers watching this and their eyes are glossing over going, where do I start? I do this all day. Love it. It's my favorite thing. You know, maybe we can double back around uh, on another interview some other day uh, that we can probably talk about something that would be more along the lines of some of these newbie self-publishers. I know sometimes they can be overwhelmed. I understood everything exactly as you're sharing with me, and it makes complete and total sense. So, uh, hey, man, you've given us a lot of great information. I want to start to wrap things up, but before we do, how can people find out a little bit more information about Author Platform Rocket, and how can they reach out to you? Well, first of all, you can go to Author Platform Rocket. You can click the links on the page that do the things. Um, I have <laughs> strategically placed videos for people explaining in my own brand of Johnnyisms exactly what's going on at each level. Uh, so if you can buy some stuff, that's awesome. We got some automated stuff, a lot of self serve. Uh, like I said, we turned the whole lead gen thing uh, into an automated, uh, done for you system. Super cool, awesome stuff. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's like more customized, you know, if you're doing better, uh, if you're looking for that kind of thing, then, you know, check out like the, the holy crap help, I need everything done for me section. And then if you're, you know, one of those business entrepreneurs, self-publishing people, uh, you can actually, you know, email us at agency at authorplatformrocket.com. Right now, I have not put up a page for that because like I said, uh, that's mostly on me directly at that end of the business. So there are teams, there are systems. We have an excellent customer support uh, group of folks that have been trained like a bunch of wizard ninjas wrapped in a sackcloth. You don't even see them coming until you feel better afterwards. And you're like, what was that awesome that just blew through the room? <laughs> and so we, get, we get you taken care of regardless of why you're emailing us. And we do it quickly. It's good times. But yeah, authorplatformrocket.com. There's a podcast. It, it, you know, we hired a voice actor that sounds just like me. Uh, and all we do is we cane him every Wednesday so he can keep up these weird uh, vocal intonations. But he said, yeah, it sounds a lot like me. Nice. That's tremendous. Uh, Johnny, dude, you have been tremendous. This was an awesome interview. I cannot wait to actually push publish on this one. So uh, you folks got all the information that you need to get started here. If it seems like it might be a little bit over your head, I think that what you can do is just drop your questions, comments, and concerns in the comments below, or of course, reach directly out to Johnny himself. In the meantime, in between time, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you share it with somebody else who's into publishing too. Till later, it's been Self Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you soon.